Can we begin, Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandak Prana Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, we can start now. Okay. Om Magyana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kaupatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Sri Ishupanishad at the level of Bhakti Shastri. We were on mantra number six. Right? Everybody remember mantra six? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes to Sarvani Bhutani. Yes to Sarvani Bhutani. Atmani Manupashyati. Sarva Bhutishu Chatmanam Tatuna Vidya Gupsate Translation He who systematically sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord, who sees all living entities and his part as his parts and parcels and who sees the Supreme Lord within everything, never hates anything or any being. So we heard, this is a description of the Mahabhagwat devotee, very advanced devotee, topmost devotee, Mahabhagwat. So in the purport, Prabhupada begins describing different levels of devotees. And we heard about Kanista devotee, right? We'll ask, who would like to tell us about kan Kanista devotee? What's the nature of the Kanista devotee? Some Mataji can tell us. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, Kanista devotee, he looks that the uh, Lord is in the temple only. Okay, very good. And uh, uh, he he always fight with others and uh, and uh, he never have faith on one thing always like uh, and too much materialistic oh but he likes the deity yeah yes he yeah, has a lot of attachment to the deity, they like very much the deity. So, yes. That's, so in, that, in some ways, that's, he's a devotee, right? Yes. But he's got limited understanding. Yes, Maharaj. Weak faith, maybe, and not much knowledge also. What about... Yes, what about the Madhyam devotee then? Madhyam Adhikari, he is, he is friendly with the uh, all, all types of persons and uh, he sees uh, every, everywhere as a lord and uh, he has a good faith on, uh, like strong faith. No, Madhyam, reads, Madhyam devotee, yes. Madhyam, intermediate. Is not the highest devotee. So he won't see everybody equally. Uh, he makes friends, Maharaj. With he who? Who, 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 does he, who does he make friends with? Uh, who is in the path of devotion? Okay, he makes friends with the devotees. Yes. Yes. 
and and uh, who uh, he like uh, and uh, for the non like who are like having faith but not understanding like innocent people uh, he tried to uh, tell them about lord okay and who are not believers non devotees atheistic people uh, he keep distance with them like avoid them that's right yes he makes a distinction right he distinguishes between the innocent and the atheist why does he avoid the atheist because they don't have faith on lord and they hate the so should he should shouldn't he go and try to preach to them no it's an offense who don't have faith we have to create faith but some people they don't understand they don't want to believe only yeah right if they if they if we go and try to preach to them they'll become more offensive they'll simply make more offenses they'll criticize more and they'll blaspheme more so that not good So we just neglect them, we avoid them, keep away from them, as you said, right? So this is a madhyama devotee. Yes. Right. What about the deity? How does he see the deity? Deity, they see like Lord is everywhere. No, Madhyam devotee. Madhyam. Yeah. Does he worship the deity? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he will. Yes. Yeah. He Everybody. Should. He has love and devotion for the deity, right? He makes friends with the devotees. He gives mercy to who? Who to innocent did, people. To the innocent people, right? And he neglects, or he will avoid the the blasphemers, or those who are openly atheistic. So this is a madhyama devotee. He makes distinction. So we're going to go on now. We'll hear about the the uttama devotee, the topmost devotee. Above. Right? Who would like to read for us? Uh, maybe we could hear from Achuta Chaitan Achuta. Who is it? Achuta Giridhar. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Could you read? Purport. Yeah, above the Madhyamadi Kari, we already started the purport. I just joined the above the above the madhyam adhikari is the uttama adhikari who sees everything in relation to the supreme lord such a devotee does not discriminate between an atheist and a theist but sees everyone as part and parcel of god he knows that there is no essential difference between a vastly learned brahmana and a dog in the street because both of them are part and parcel of the lord although they are encased in different bodies on account of the different qualities of their activities in their previous lives he sees that the brahmana particle of the supreme lord has not misused his little independence given him by the lord and that the dog particle has misused his independence and is therefore being punished by the laws of nature by being encaged in the form of a dog not considering the respective actions of the brahmana and the dog the uttama adhikari tries to go tries to do good to both such a learned devotee is not misled by material bodies 
but is attracted but as but is attracted by the spiritual spark within them very good so prabhu prabhu can you tell me how can we do good for a dog because the dog how we can do because dog is also has atma and he is also uh, means the uh, he is also like as a part and he is also as a part and parcel of the lord so what are we going dog, to do what can we do to help him yeah like uh, dog we can like we can give him prasadam okay anything else dogs i they may not eat prasadam sometimes they eat prasadam sometimes not yeah, yeah. but uh, maharaj i have heard that the od should not uh, uh, have a pet as a dog in the house yeah dogs are not meant to be in the house they keep them outside the house we can be a bit, yeah. we give we give mercy but, to dog we can give mercy to dog so yeah and like uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu has given the right mercy to that dog in the so Leela. we can give them prasadam we can also let them hear the holy name yes maharaj the chanting of the holy name is beneficial to the dogs also what about the brahmana how can we do good for the brahmana the uttamadikari thinks um, brahmana means uh, the brahmana should be engaged in the uh, service of the lord like uh, pathan pathan means they have to preach to the uh, about the lord mm -hmm. so what about this uttamadikari he he sees everybody equal right so is he going to preach yeah maharaj i have heard that uh, uttama adhikari has to come down to the madhyama adhikari then only he can preach because mm -hmm. then only he can differentiate otherwise he is at such a level that he sees everyone on the same level right yeah he thinks everybody already krishna conscious you know so he doesn't preach the top most devotees what do they do they just do the bhajan they just chant hari krishna they do their own worship they don't preach usually yes. on the top most yes. level they're not going to preach much because they see everybody already krishna conscious okay very good thank you prabhu yes maharaj we'll go ahead who would like to read let's see who's next we've got some more people Ah, Sushanta Samal, Sushanta Sus, 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 Samal, yeah, is he here? Yes, Maharaj, he is here, Maharaj. Okay, you can read for us, please. Those who, those who imitate. Sushanta Bhu. Hare Krishna Shushant Prabhu Pushpanjali Mataji Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Prabhu Shushant Prabhu Hare Krishna Can you hear me? Hare Krishna Prabhuji Unmute yourself and speak Prabhuji Pushpanjali Mataji, Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Hare Krishna Mataji. She just entered Prabhu. Okay, let's go ahead. Ajita Madhusudan Prabhu. Ajita, no. Good with Pranam Maharaj. Yeah, can you refer us please Prabhu, those who imitate Adhikari by planting a sense of oneness or fellowship, but who behave on the bodily platform are actually false philanthropists. The concept of universal brotherhood must be learned 
from an uttam adhikari and not from a foolish person who does not properly understand the individual soul or the supreme lord the super soul expansion who dwells everywhere hari krishna mahara okay so the uttam adhikari sometimes people will imitate right like that you know they will pretend they're on the highest level so what are they going to do thinking to sh pretend that uh, thinking they're on the highest level they'll try to make a show of what how do they behave Okay how how in what in what way is Uttama Adhikari going to imitate how, in which way is this person imitating that he is Uttama Uttama Adhikari how does he behave can you tell us in your own words Uttama Adhikari he is uh, He's, uh, at the high level but this, the, 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 but this person is not Uttamadhikari, but he's pretending he's Uttamadhikari. So Uttama, he, the person who is doing like this, basically, uh, he may not be in a devotional service at all, or he may not be even believing in uh, uh, Supreme Lord, mm -hmm. personality, personality of Godhead, but he try to imitate the things, he want to make a show of, and he try to uh, convince all the people with his own uh, theories without uh, referring to the vedic the satric uh, injections right yeah and they would, and they would speak about this you know the the oneness the, the, the everything we're all one and we should come together and work, uh, we're all one, uh, the idea, this sense of w oneness that let's all become united together in the oneness of the Supreme, but they have no real knowledge. They were never trained, Prabhupada talks, that they have to have, act, they, must be ha they must have learned from somebody who is on that platform. They cannot just simply speak about the oneness. So this, this idea, Prabhupada speaks here about the universal brotherhood. You know, we're all one, it's all one, everything's one. But they have no real spiritual understanding. Okay, could you read the next paragraph also please, Prabhu? It is clearly mentioned in this sixth mantra that one should observe or systematically see. This means that one must follow the previous acharyas, the perfected teachers. Anupashyati is the exact Sanskrit word used in this connection. Anu means to follow and Pashyati means to observe. Thus the word Anupashyati means that one should Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj, I think he is disconnected, Maharaj. Uh -huh. Hare Krishna. I think it does some problem. I started from uh, thus the word Anupashyati means that one should not see things as he does with the naked eye, but should follow the previous acharyas. Due to material defect, the naked eye cannot see anything properly. One cannot see properly unless one has heard from superior source and the highest source is the wisdom, Vedic wisdom, which is spoken by the Lord himself. Vedic truths are coming in disciplic succession from the Lord to Brahma, from Brahma to Narada, from Narada to Vyasa and from Vyasa to his many disciples. Formerly, there was no need to record the messages of the Veda. 
because people in earlier ages were more intelligent and had sharper memories they could follow the instruction simply by hearing once from the mouth of a bona fide spiritual master hare krishna maharaj oh hare krishna so prabhu is describing to us the past how people had very good memories very sharp memory they could remember everything they could just they knew so many verses so many shlokas they'd read so many or they'd heard so many so of course nowadays we have poor memories so there's need to record the message of course shula vyasadev did that shula vyasadev he wrote had everything written down because he knew kali yuga is coming and the kali yuga people of poor memories so for their benefit he had everything written down of course that time they were writing on palm leaves but still they had it, he had it written down and that was to our a great benefit that we could receive that knowledge the writings of people like vyasadev so prabhu talks about this important thing that this anupashyati we have to see we have to follow one should see things as he does one should one should not see things as he does with the eye but we should see through the acharyas follow the acharyas in mahabharat there's one verse which prabhu quotes it's also quoted in chaitanya charit <coughs> Quoted in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Mahajano Yenagata Sapanta, follow in the footsteps to follow. Mahajano Yenagata, follow the Mahajans. Sapanta, follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans. So here also the same point is made, Anupashyati. We have to follow the Acharyas. We have to, and Prabhupada said, it's not just seeing with the eye. The naked eye cannot see properly, but if we hear, so the important thing, it's not just the eyes, but it's the hearing. Right? When we go to the Holy Dham, when people come to the Holy Dham, we often tell them, you don't come here just for the eye exercise, you come here to hear, it's for the ears, just like we're hearing the Ishopanishad. The, the hearing process is what is important. So we have to hear, and we have to hear through the, the proper channel. So Prabhupada mentions about the, the cyclic succession, that we want to understand the Vedas, we have to hear it explained from Brahma to Narada to Vyas, and from Vyas to Madhvacharya, Madhvacharya, Madhavendra Puri, Ishwara Puri, Lord Chaitanya, like that. So there's a line. We have to hear things in the proper manner. All right. So uh, we'll have somebody else read now. Um, what about press press? Prasanna Chit, Prasanna Chitta, Gopina. Yes, Prabhu? Prasanna Chit, Gopina, Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, can you read Paras Prabhu? At present there are many. Natural commentary on the 
Vedanta Sutra. There is also the Bhagavad Gita, which was spoken by the Lord Himself and recorded by Vyasadeva. There are the most there, there are the most um, important uh, revealed scripture and any commentary that uh, contradicts the principle of the Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam is unauthorized. There is complete agreement among the Upanishad, Vedanta Sutra, Veda, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and no one should try to reach any conclusion about the Vedas without receiving instructions from members of Vyasadeva disciplined successor who believe in the personality of Godhead and his diverse energies as they are explained in Sri Upanishad. Thank you. Okay, thank you Prabhu. So Prabhupada is explaining the importance of evidence. Right? Yes. Remember we, we studied in the introduction, different kinds of evidence are there. Right? We get yes. e evidence, what's other sources of evidence? Our scripture. Yes. But what's, what are some of the imperfect sources? Not everybody goes to this. That, uh, that uh, um, comment, commentary of uh, other uh, other commentary other than uh, uh, parampara. Okay, but some, some people simply depend on their own senses. We see pradyaksha, right? Use the senses. They want to understand everything by the senses. Yes. So, what's the problem with the senses? The senses is imperfect. Right. Mm, and, and then we try speculation, we use the mind to understand, yes. hypothesis, right? Yes. yes, right. And how is that? What's the problem with that? As it is imperfect, so uh, the and imper imperfect cannot become the perfect. Okay. Come, we may come up with a theory in our mind, and then someone else will come up with another theory and defeat it. And then someone yes. else will defeat that. So you'll never get any real conclusion simply depending yes. on our own mind. So we need to hear from the scriptures. Right? So. The, 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 there's different kinds of scriptures, right? What are some of the different divisions of the scriptures? Right? The, the four Vedas, what part of the scripture, what part, of, what kind of scriptures are the Vedas, the four Vedas? They're called? Shruti. Yeah, Shruti, right. Shruti means what? from discipline successor uh, to hear from the right source. Shruti means the hearing process, right? Hearing. Yes. And what about the Puranas, Mahabharat? Where are they from? That is by Vasudeva, written by Vasudeva. Yeah. Is it Shruti? It is Smriti Mahabharat. Smriti, right. Smriti. Smriti means what? Remembering. Remembering, yes. Smriti is the remembering process, right. So the four Vedas, the original four Vedas, that's a hearing process. And the Smriti is a remembering process. And you've got, in the Smriti, you've got the Puranas, like Srimad Bhagavatam. And you've got also Mahabharata. You, these kind of books. What about Vedanta Sutra? What is the Vedanta Sutra? 
The Vedanta Sutra, that is logic, that is nyaya. Yeah. Right? So that is logic. It's not, we don't call it smriti or, or shruti, it's nyaya. Srila Vyasadeva wrote Vedanta Sutra based on logic. But we can understand the Vedanta Sutra by Vyasadeva's commentary on it. Right? What's Vyasadeva's commentary on the Vedanta Sutra called? The Vedanta Sutra commentary by Srila Vyasadeva is called? Sh yes, yeah, Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes. Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Purana. It's Vyasadeva's own commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. The other Acharyas, they have their own commentaries also on Vedanta Sutra. Like Shankaracharya, he has his famous Sharya Rakavashya, which is his commentary on Vedanta Sutra. And we have also Baladev Vijayabhusan's commentary, the Govinda Bhashya which is his commentary on Vedanta Sutra. And Bhagavad Gita is from Mahabharat, right? So Bhagavad Gita is also from Srila Vyasadeva. So you have the Upanishad, the Upanishads, Upanishads are Shruti or Smriti. Upa huh? Shruti. Upanishads? Shruti. Shruti. Shruti, yes. Shruti, the Upanishads are in the Vedas. They're in the original Vedas. So they're, sh they're Shruti. So you quote Upanishads, you're quoting Shruti, Shruti evidence. But Prabhupada saying, making the point that you can't make any conclusion which is different from what's in the scriptures. Whatever you try to present, it has to be supported with the evidence of the scripture. Shastra Praman, right? You have to have the evidence of the scriptures and then you can present some conclusion, you can make some point. And Prabhupada also makes the point that all the Vaishnava Acharyas, they believe in the Personality of Godhead and His diverse energies. Now Shankaracharya, he doesn't say like that. The Mayavadis, they won't say like that. But the Vaishnava Acharyas, they will say. They all believe that there's a Supreme Lord and His energies. And the living entities are the energy of the Lord, the servants. Okay? So this is the Vaishnava commentary. We'll go ahead. Somebody, we have, need somebody else to read for us. Uh, we have uh, uh, Prima, Premanjana Gopesha. Oh, Prema, Prema Maya Gopesha. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna According to the Bhagavad according to Bhagavad according to the Bhagavad Gita 18.54, only one who is already on the liberated platform, Brahma Bhuta, can become an Uttama Adhikari devotee and see everything being as his own brother. This vision cannot be had by politicians who are always after some material gain. One who imitates the symptoms of an Uttam Adhikari may serve another's outward body for the purpose of fame or material reward, but he does not serve the spirit soul. Such an imitator can have no information of the spiritual world. The Uttam Adhikari sees the spirit soul within the material body and serves him as spirit, thus the material aspect is automatically served. Yes. So one is, is it Prabhupada's quoting Bhagavad Gita 1854, right? One is already, one, only one who is on the liberated platform can become an Uttama Adhikari platform. 
it can become automatic carry. So what, what does this mean, liberated platform? How is it described there in the Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavad Gita it is like Brahma Bhuta Paras Prasannatma Na Shochi Na Shochati Na Kangshati Okay. Can, can, can you explain it to me? I can't understand the sloka. Can you explain the words to me? The uh, the Uttamadikari uh, devotee actually sees everything on you know at the, at the, at the Brahma as well as at the spiritual level. Well, know? he's not on the Uttamadikari platform yet. He's just coming to the liberated platform. From the liberated platform, then he has to go on to become Uttamadikari. We just want to know first of all about the liber liberated platform. He's in that transcendental situation, like he's on the transcendental, he's transcendentally situated. What does that mean? What does that mean, transcendentally situated? Like he realizes the, uh, uh, he realizes the Supreme Brahman and uh, he, actually he's in a joyful position. I don't know that he's realized the Supreme Brahman. That would be, that's a higher stage. He's only come to the, the Brahm Buddha platform. He's, he's not yet realized the Supreme Brahman. What, what has he realized? Uh, seeing every living being as his own brother. Then like, uh, as his... Okay, how does, how, why does he see that? Or some material, like... Uh, why does he, why does he see every living being as his brother? Uh, because he understands that he is also the same part and parcel of the Supreme Lord whom he himself belongs to. Okay. So he can see within uh, him the spirit soul and right. the material body also. Right. He's the, the identified that he is not the body, right? That he is yes. Brahman and that all the other living entities are also parts of the Brahman. This is the Brahma Bhutta platform, Brahma Bhutta, knowing that we are Brahman, we are part of the Brahman. So he sees all the living entities, they are also Brahman, he knows he's also Brahman. So he's, he's joyful, he's happy about it, yeah, detached from the body. So that's, that's it. Beginning, that's the liberation, liberated from the bodily conceptual concept of life. So then he can go on to think about advancing more. And maybe he can go on to become an Uttaman Adhikari devotee. Okay, and then this Prabhupada talks about politicians. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, the the, they, of course, they, in India it's very convenient for a politician to also present himself as being some kind of a religious person or spiritual person. People will have a lot of respect for him. But Prabhupada explains that to actually be on that level of the Uttama Adhikari, they have to be really detached from the body. If they're still in the bodily conception of life, then they cannot be Uttama Adhikari. Uttama Adhikari does not identify with the body. So he may serve another's outward body for the purpose of fame, material rewards. Yeah, they do welfare work. It's all on the bodily platform. They don't serve the soul. What, how can we do service for the soul? Uh, by actually making him, uh, by directing him to Krishna or uh, the authorized like, representative of Krishna. Yes, the soul wants to connect to Krishna. How can it, how can it connect to Krishna? What do you have, what what is this? What's the best thing we can give for the soul? 
Who yes, what? Holy name. The holy name, yeah. Let them, the soul, awaken the soul by chanting of the holy name that awakens the spiritual soul. The spirit soul we can connect to Krishna through the chanting of the holy name. So that's very important. The chanting of the holy name, spiritual activities like the glory, describing the glories of the Lord and the qualities of the Lord and praising the devotees who serve the Lord. This is all very good way to connect to the, to connect the soul to the Supreme Soul. The Uttama sees the Uttama Adhikari sees the spirit soul within the material body and serves him as spirit. So, so we have to understand how to actually serve as spirit. People in the bodily concept of life, they have no understanding. But Prabhupada then says, if you serve the, the, if we serve the soul, if we serve the spirit within the body, then the material body is also is automatically served. How would that be? How can we, by serving the soul, how are we serving the material body? Um, uh, because if the, if the soul is... Uh, because by connecting to Krishna, it is like, you know, watering the root of the tree. If you are watering the root, automatically the, all parts of the tree gets uh, flourished. Yeah. We water separately for any other part. Similarly, if we feed the soul and uh, so, you know, take care, means, uh, uh, chant holy name of Krishna, be in Krishna consciousness, automatically all of the other things get uh, satisfied. Okay, yes, very good, yes, I think so. We see actually people come to Krishna consciousness and they may have so many material desires in the beginning, but by chanting Hare Krishna and by serving Krishna, then they feel peaceful, satisfied. And there are many examples. People just come and do service in the beginning they come with so many motives, but by simply by serving Krishna, all their material desires are forgotten and they become happy in Krishna consciousness. All right, let's go ahead. Text number seven, mantra seven. You can repeat. Yasmin Sarvani Bhutani. Atmani va bhutva janataha Tatra ko moha ka shoka Ekadvamma Translation, one who always sees all living entities as spiritual sparks, in quality one with the Lord, becomes a true knower of things. What then can be illusion or anxiety for him? So what kind of devotee is this? What level is he on? Anybody? What about Madhyam? Am I allowed to answer? Yeah. Uh, I assume this is Madhyam Adhikari, he has the knowledge, but he doesn't have any implementation. It's, it's what? Say again. He has the knowledge, but doesn't have the implementation of that knowledge. He's a Madhyam. Yeah. Yeah, it could be both Madhyam and it could also be Uttama. Both. Both. It may be, he may be a Uttama, he may be a Madhyam. But 
Kanista, they won't have, they won't be able to see like that. He doesn't see all living entities equally, quality one with the Lord. That, so the Kanista's out because he only sees the deity. But the Madhyam, he sees like that, he sees like that. He may, he may ignore the atheists, but he knows their spirit souls. Yeah. Right? Like here, uh, that's both famous that we use a Vidya Vinaya Sampanne, Brahmanagal Hostini, Vidya Sampanne, Pandita Sampanne, Yeah, see every living, right? Pandit sees with an equal vision, elephant, the cow, the dog, and the dog eater, learned, gentle Brahman. A similar verse, okay. So we're hearing about more let's somebody like to let's see who can read for us maybe marriages want to read a little uh, marriage marriage bindia bindia marriage here yes uh, yes Maharaj. you can read for us please purport beginning purport Except for the Mad Madhyama Adhikari and Uttama Adhikari discussed above, no one can correctly see the spiritual position of a living being. The living entities are quali qualitatively one with the Supreme Lord, just as the sparks of a fire are qualitatively one with the fire. Yet sparks are not fire as far as quantity is concerned. For the quantity of heat and light present, uh, present in the spark is not equal to that in fire. The Mahabhagavata, the great devotee, sees oneness in the sense that he sees everything as the energy of the Supreme Lord. Since there is no difference between the energy and the energetic, there is the sense of oneness. Although from the analytical point of view, heat and light are different from fire, there is no meaning to uh, the word fire without heat and light. In synthesis, they are, therefore, heat, light and fire are the same. Okay. Yes, so, so the, the Lord, how is the relationship between the Lord and the living entities described here? Bindiya Mataji? Uh, yes, Maharaj. It is uh, related like spark of fire. Right. Yeah, the, the Lord is like the fire and we are like the tiny sparks, right? So yes, we, have, we have the oneness, the sense of oneness in quality but different in quantity. The spark yes. is not equal to the fire. So Prabhupada yes, says, Prabhupada said, Mahabhagavat, great devotee, sees oneness. So this the Mahabhagavat, that's the Uttama Adhikari, generally. And that he sees everywhere the energy of the Supreme. So there's the energy of the Lord and there's the source of the energy, the energetic. And Prabhupada said, this the, this is the same thing. The sense there's a sense of oneness there. There's no difference between the energy and the energetic because the energy comes from the energetic. So they're the same in a sense. He gives, he gives, he says, uh, analytically there's some difference, but in the general sense there's no difference. So he, he gives the same example about the fire that heat and light are there in the fire. The heat and light are not separate from the fire. So understanding the Lord and the living entities, seeing the, the living entities in relationship to the Lord. Okay, we'll go ahead. Uh, we can have another lady read for us here. Let's see. Oh. Mataji, uh, Subhangi Harini Mataji, oh, Sub Subhamaya Harini. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, can you read Maharaj? In this mantra, the word Ekatvam Anupashyataha indicate that one should see the unity of all living entities from the viewpoint of the revealed scriptures. The individual parts of the Supreme Court, the Lord, possess almost 80% of the non-qualities of the whole, but they are not quantitatively equal to the Supreme Lord. These qualities are present in minute quantity for the living entity is but a minute part and parcel of the Supreme Court. To use another example, the quantity of salt present in a drop is never comparable to the quantity of salt present in the complete ocean. But the salt present in the drop is qualitatively equal in chemical composition to all the salts present in the ocean. If the individual living being were equal to the Supreme Lord, both qualitatively and quantitatively, there would be no question of his being under the influence of the material energy. In the previous mantras, it has already been discussed that no living being, not even the powerful Devi God, can surpass the Supreme Being in any respect. Therefore, Ekotvam does not mean that a living being is equal in all respects the Supreme Lord. It does, however, indicate that in a broader sense, there is one interest. Just as in a family, the interest of all members is one, or in a nation, the national interest is one, although there are many different individual citizens. Since the living entities are all members of the same Supreme Family, their interest and that of the Supreme Being are not different. Every living being is the son of the Supreme Being. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 7.5, all living creatures throughout the universe, including birds, reptiles, ants, aquatic trees, and so on, are emanations of the marginal potency of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, all of them belong to the family of the Supreme Being. There is no clash of interest. Okay, thank you very much. Very nice to hear this, how there's oneness within the world, right? Oneness in the sense, how is there the oneness, Maharaji? They are all from qualitatively, it is same with the Supreme Lord. Right, that we have the qualities, right? And did you notice Prabhupada, he mentioned about this, uh, he talks about 80, nearly 80 percent, right? Yes. Do you know where that came from? At the beginning of where you were reading, the individual sparks yeah, of the… The individual the... sparks of the Supreme Lord possess almost 80 percentage of the known qualities of the whole. So how is, where does he get this nearly 80% from? Have you studied this in Nectar of Devotion? No, in, in, in the Nectar of Devotion they list 60. Does somebody know? Anybody know? Anybody open? Anybody know where this 80% comes from? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, as Krishna has 64 qualities, yeah. from that we have 50. Uh -huh. That is 80%. Okay, 50 out of 64 is about 78%, nearly 80%. Yeah. Right, right, yes. And how many does, does uh, Brahma have? Brahma, Brahma, 50. 50. Brahma, Brahma, Brahma also 50, right? Brahma's a jiva, right? He's a living entity, he's a jiva. And what about Shiva? 55, Maharaj. And Vishnu? 60. Okay. So there are four qualities unique to Krishna, right? 
What are the four qualities? All attractive. Prem Madhurya, Lila Madhurya. Venu Madhurya. Venu Madhurya. Venu Madhurya. Rupa Madhurya. Rupa Madhurya. Madhurya. Huh? Lila, Lila Madhurya. Lila Madhurya. Huh? Lila Madhurya, Rupa Madhurya, Venu Madhurya, and? Prema Madhurya. Prema Madhurya. Okay. So, love for his devotees. All right, so they're special, so the living entity, that's, but Prabhupada mentions, he said actually, uh, these qualities are present in minute quantity for the living entity. Because we're a minute part and parcel. We're part and parcel, but we're very small, right? We said the spark and the fire. And then Prabhupada then is giving the example about the salt, and the, the drop of water and the ocean. So there's a big difference in quantity, but the same in quan quality. Almost the same in quality. <laughs> certain qualities, of course, we certain qualities we don't have. Anyway, nearly 80%. All right? So that's the, the difference. Okay, so we'll go ahead, the spiritual entities, uh, we'll have, oh, let's have a man read now. Uh, uh, Dina Pavani. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Dina Pavan, yes, Prabhu, please. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dana Pranam. Hare Krishna. Yeah, the spiritual entities are meant for enjoyment as stated in Vedanta Sutra. 1.1.12 Ananda Mayo Vyasat By nature and constitution, every living being, including the Supreme Lord and each of his part and parcels, is meant for eternal enjoyment. The living being who are encaged in the material tangible are constantly seeking enjoyment, but they are seeking it on the wrong platform. Apart from the material platform, is a spiritual platform where the Supreme Being enjoys himself with his innumerable associates. On that platform, there is no trace of material qualities and therefore that platform is called Nirguna. On that Nirguna platform, there is never a clash over the object of enjoyment. Here in the material world, there is always a clash between different individuals being because here the, pro, uh, the proper center of enjoyment is missed. The real, the real center of enjoyment is the Supreme Lord, who is the center of sublime and spiritual rasa dance. We are all meant to join him and enjoy life with one transcendental interest and without a clash. That is the highest platform of spiritual interest. And as soon as one realizes uh, realize this perfect form of oneness, there is no question of illusion, moha, or lamentation, shoka. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh -huh. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay. All right, so Prabhupada is talking about nirguna. Right. On that platform, there's no trace of material qualities. So does that mean the Lord doesn't have any qualities? What do you say? Yeah, Maharaj, the Lord has the qualities, but actually it is on the transcendental platform. The object of the enjoyment is not on the material platform. That is what my understanding is, Maharaj. Okay. So what are some of the Lord's qualities then? So, uh, Lord has 64 qualities, like, uh, and among them is like, uh, he is all attractive and he uh, uh, is Vila Purushottam. Uh, uh, like he 
the smallest of smallest, biggest of biggest is uh, he's one of the Puranas, the oldest person. Okay, yeah, good. And we, we Prabhupada, he talks about how the, the Lord is, he, he likes to enjoy, he quotes this Ananda Maya by a sat, that, yeah. that the nature of every living entity is for enjoyment. So we are also meant for enjoyment, the Lord also wants to enjoy. How does the Lord enjoy? When the Lord wants to enjoy, what does He do for His enjoyment? Well, actually everything is for His enjoyment. So how does He enjoy? He go and associates with His devotees and their activities what is uh, that doing if the Lord is enjoying them? What what are they doing? What are their activities? Can you tell us? Their activities, uh, they don't see as a Lord, uh, as a Supreme Lord. Uh, as a Supreme Lord, not, not in the meaning of uh, like higher authority. They see Lord is one of them, or uh, their intimate relation with them. So in that relation, intimate relationship, they, uh, they behave with Lord. Like there are many examples, which is like all the Krishna's friend and Krishna Lila. There, uh, Krishna was with them and enjoying their association, like Mother Mangalia, uh, Sudama, and they are they are playing with Lord. They are, they are, they are offering even their food is everything to Lord, and they are enjoying to offering that. And Lord also their provision of their love and relationship. He is enjoying that. Okay. You didn't tell us exactly what they're doing. I don't know how they're enjoying. You know, you say they're enjoying. I'd like to know more what they do. Uh, Maharaj, can I try? Okay. Uh, like having a loving relationship, uh, uh, reciprocation between Lord and His devotees. Like Lord is also like to serve His devotees, His uh, pure devotees. Whereas the pure devotees also like to serve the Lord, so there is a competition between both of them to serve each other. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I I don't know. If the, I mean, the the Lord how Thank how he gets his enjoyment, his his eternal enjoyment. I think certainly he has that that mood he'll take care of his devotees is that's nice he likes he'll do that that's more like a sense of duty you know that he feels that you take care of the devotees but i was thinking more about his his pastimes you know like how does he enjoy what does he yes so what do they do together Rasalila, yeah, Rasalila, right. That's it. This is the Lord's enjoyment. He goes in the forest and he calls the gopis to come and they dance Rasalila all night. And the Lord likes to dance Rasalila, it's his enjoyment. And during the day he goes out with the cowherd boys in the fields with the cows. That's his enjoyment. And when he's in Dwarka, he's with the queens. In Dwarka, he is in, in royal form. There, he is not in Vindavan form. Yeah, different mood, right? Di yes. Different. Vindavan form is he is dear and near to everyone. But still, uh, but uh, still, is for enjoyment. Even when he's in his royal form, there's got to be some pleasure there. He's got to get some enjoyment. So, he has, he has some. He'll have activities. Of course, some. He'll go. Up, he'll go out. He'll go around the kingdom, he'll go and meet the people, he'll, he comes to Kurukshetra, came all the way from Dwarka to, to Kurukshetra for the solar eclipse, and he met all the people from Vrindavan at that time. Hmm. Now, what I was trying to say, like, 
His role in in Vrindavan uh, and Dwarka is different. Like when he was in Vrindavan, the way he played with Sudama, same thing he didn't do when he, Sudama came to meet with him in Dwarka. That time he was a completely different approach. Because in, in Dwarka he is more royal. That is a law like Lord Narayana in the form of that mood. Yeah, but still it was very sweet, you know, he met with Sudama, he wasn't exactly like Lord Narayan, you know, he, he got, you know, he received Sudama so nicely. We don't hear about Lord Narayan washing the feet of the Brahmins. No, what I was trying to say, not exactly, means in Lord Narayana, he's a diplomatic form of Lord. Similarly, in Dwarka, he's the royal form, or the king that, that form, or that uh, Lila he has performed. Not like same Lila what he has done in Vrindavan. Yeah, oh definitely. Yeah, we know. There's a difference. Uh, the Lord of Dwarka is different from the Lord of Vrindavan. Right. Uh, Vrindavan mood is more Madhurya. Whereas the Dwarka mood is more Aishwarya. But still, there's enjoyment. It's just a different kind of enjoyment. The Lord enjoys. Enjoys the opulence. He enjoys the opulence. His palace is there in Dwarka. He enjoys the opulence of having so many queens. He enjoys the family. He's a person. So, uh, so the Lord likes to enjoy, and, and He likes to enjoy in an unlimited manner. Our enjoyment is very limited, very small. We're very small compared to Him. But the same mood is there. We also like to enjoy. But we're trying to enjoy in material life, right? In the wrong place. We're trying to find pleasure in the wrong ways. We are trying to enjoy our eating and sleeping, mating and defending. We're not, you know, but the real pleasure is there in serving Krishna. Can I, can I put this way, Maharaj? Our enjoyment is sense gratification? Oh, yeah. Spiritual? That's it. That's, it's all sense gratification, exactly. But there's, yeah. there's different levels of sense gratification. There's spiritual sense gratification and there's material sense gratification. Right? So we get spiritual sense gratification in devotional service. Be prasadam, there's a lot of pleasure in taking prasadam, having kirtan. Yes, chanting and dancing. Dressing the deities. You know, there's a lot of pleasure in that. You can see devotees they get so much satisfaction. Even if you're just making the vases, you make the flower vases. I used to make the flower vases, and I, you know, I, 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 it was I was so attached to making the flower vases to go on the altar every day. It's, it's you know, you get this. It's the satisfaction, the pleasure of serving the Lord. So Krishna enjoys with his, all of his associates. There's no trace of material qualities. That platform is called Nirguna. It's not material. A Nirguna platform, Prabhupada said, never a clash over the object of enjoyment. In material world, there's so many things with, with the clash of enjoyment. Where to, how to enjoy, do this, do that. Somebody wants to go to cinema, somebody wants to go and eat, somebody wants to go picnic, somebody wants to go to the beach. No, different things. But on the spiritual platform, there's no clash. Material world is always a clash. Different individuals. The center of enjoyment is missed. The real center it's got to be the Supreme Lord, right? And then Prabhupada talks about the Rasa dance. We're all meant to join Him, enjoy life with one transcendental interest. Hmm. So that is 
spiritual interest. So this in is... This, in this still I need some guidance from you. Am I allowed to seek for your guidance? Yes, you can try. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, this is my own personal... Uh, uh, you can say satisfaction. Uh, in my, I don't know whether I am right or I am going in wrong direction. Maharaj, I like to always speak and start prasad to the people, not necessarily for the only devotee, even the devotee and thus the people who is derived from the facilities. I like to go to them and they serve them prasad and um, I feel very happiness or deep in my heart I feel very happy that when I, when I can do that, that cook, cook myself, take it and distribute the prasad to them and let them to see happy because they do not have a facilities to get all those. So is this a kind of way am I engaging myself like uh, sense gratification is kind of or is it really like spiritual activities? Well, if the food is offered to Krishna. Suddenly, suddenly. And then ide ideally, when we serve prasada, we want to also chant the holy name of Krishna. See, like here in Mayapur, Prabhupada said he didn't want the people taking the food home because he said if they take the food home, they'll mix it with fish. So he said that's not good. If, they, if you give people prasada and they take it and mix it with fish or with meat, it's not good. No, no, that, that, that will not be there, that I'm sure, I'm aware. They're not going to do that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, when, the, you see, the, the, the best way to give prasadam is that you give it along with the chanting of the holy name. If you can have also the Hare Krishna mantra playing the time when you're giving out prasadam. It's nice, okay. you know, let people know. Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's see, somebody else can read for us. Manaji, we've got some Manaji to read for us here. Uh, uh, what about uh, Deepriya Gandharvika? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. A godless civilization arises from illusion and the result of such a civilization is lamentation. A godless civilization such as that sponsored by the more modern politicians is always full of anxieties because it may be crushed at any moment. That is the law of nature. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 7.14, no one but those who surrender at the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord can surpass the stringent laws of nature. Thus, if you wish to get rid of all sorts of illusion and anxiety and create unity out of all diverse interests, we must bring God into all our activities. Okay, so the godless civilization, <laughs> again proper bringing up the politicians, and so much anxieties. Of course now the whole planet is in, we're always in anxiety now with the COVID-19, so much anxiety. So material world is like that, it's a place of anxiety. Right? The spiritual world means no anxiety, Vaikuntha. But the material world by nature is full of anxiety. So Prabhupada's solution is surrender to Krishna. And he quote 714, by surrendering to Krishna you get rid of all the illusion and anxiety. So we bring God into all of our activities. Right? You're going to do charity, do it in God consciousness. You're going to work, work in God consciousness. Eating, sleeping, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, what is, where does Krishna mention about this? Doing everything in God consciousness? You know the verse? Krishna says all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer. Right, yes, this is every bring God consciousness into all of our activities, right? This is important. Okay, let's have another person read here. Uh, Sh 
Shreya Parvati Mataji. Is she here? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. You can read for us. Yeah. The results of our activities must be used to serve the interest of the Lord and not for any other purpose. Only by serving the Lord's interest can we perceive the Atma Bhuta interest mentioned herein. The Atma Bhuta interest mentioned in this mantra and the Brahma Bhuta interest mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita 18.54 are one and the same. The Supreme Atma or Soul is the Lord Himself and the Minute Atma is the Living Entity. The Supreme Atma or Paramatma uh, alone maintains all the individual minute beings for the Supreme Lord wants to derive pleasure out of their affection. The father extends himself through his children and maintains them in order to derive pleasure. If the children obey the father's will, family affairs will run smoothly with one interest and a pleasing atmosphere. The same situation is transcendentally arranged in the absolute family of the Parabrahman, the Supreme Spirit. Okay, so <laughs> Prabhupada always giving these different examples in the course of presenting the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So here he speaks about the family life. And he said if the children are obedient to the father, then he says, one interest, a pleasing atmosphere. And so the same situation is there with Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Brahman and we are the tiny parts of the Brahman. We have this relationship with the Lord. And Prabhupada said, no difference, Brahma Buddha and Atma Buddha. The same, same thing. Atma Buddha interest and Brahma Buddha interest. The interest is the, the service of the Supreme, or to come to that platform, detached from the material. So the Father, the Lord, and the living entities, like the children. Okay, we'll go ahead. We'll have another, let's see some... Uh, Sar Sarva Pati Rama Ramachandra Surapati Ramachandra Is he here? Surapati Ramachandra Prabhu? No? Ereksha Maharaj? Yeah, you're there. Okay. Parabrahman? The Parabrahman is a much a person as the individual entities, entities. Neither the Lord nor the living entities are impersonal, such impersonal, such transcendental personalities are full of transcendental bliss. Knowledge, transcendental bliss, knowledge and the life eternal. This is the real position of spiritual existence. And as soon as one is fully cognizant of this transcendental position, he at once surrenders unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Being, Sri Krishna. But such a Mahatma or great thought is very rarely seen because such transcendental realization, realization is achieved only after many, many births. Once it is attained, However, there is no longer any illusion or lamentation or the miseries of material existence or birth and death, which are all experienced in, in our personal life. That is the information we get from this mantra as the issue of initial. Okay. So, <laughs> so what do we need to do to come to this platform? No more birth and death. What, what's the qualification? No longer any illusion or lamentation. What do we have to do? Huh? 
Hare Krishna. They have to surrender to the lotus feet of uh, Sri Krishna Maharaj. Okay, have to surrender, take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Yeah. We have to become Mahatmas, right? Yes, sir. Mahatmas. What What's a Mahatma mean? Why is he a, Why is he a great soul? Why would he be a great soul? Yeah, not many people can not many people can surrender, right? Yes. Do you know the verse in the Bhagavad Gita Prabhupada's talking about here? Okay, after many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge surrenders to me. Such a soul, such a great soul, very rare. So, do you make advancement quickly in this way? Is this making rapid advancement? Maharaj, is this correct? We are fully cognizant for this transcendental position. The indication is you make advancement very slowly by cultivating knowledge. Because this, Lord Krishna says, after many, or Prabhupada writes, after many, many births, right? After many births. So it's not a quick process. That's the point. You're just going to cultivate knowledge. It's going to take a very long time. So that's one point which comes here in, the, in this paragraph here that by knowledge alone will take a long time. But we should know the Lord is personal just as we are personal. Transcendental personalities are full of transcendental bliss. Just as the Lord is full of bliss and knowledge eternally, the living entities are also meant to be like that. We have to come to that platform. This is the real position of spiritual existence. We should feel very jo joyful and blissful in Krishna consciousness when we are fully aware of our transcendental position. We'll feel joyful and we'll be happy to surrender to Krishna. It's not that, oh, I have to surrender, oh, you know, the end you lament. No, but joyfully we come and want to surrender to Krishna. We feel very happy be, to be engaged in Krishna's service. So this is uh, the position of the advanced devotees, right? That they can recognize their spiritual nature, they understand their spiritual nature. So they're free from hankering and lamenting. And there's a sense that there, there is no anxiety, no fear. Right? When devotee asks Prabhupada, what do you, what do you feel when you chant Hare Krishna? Srila Prabhupada said, I feel no fear. Hmm? That's very important. That's the transcendental platform. You're detached from the material world, detached from the material body. No fear. Material world, everybody's in fear. Why? Because we're thinking about the body, we know our body is temporary, so we have a lot of fear. We have to understand our spiritual nature, that service to Krishna will go on eternally. Krishna consciousness is something eternal, never ends, right? When we serve Krishna, we serve Krishna here, 
will go on and serve Krishna in the future, the next life, birth after birth. Even if we stay in the material world, we can go on serving Krishna. It's not that we have to go back to the spiritual world. Wherever we go, we can serve Krishna. So a devotee wants that consciousness. Keep me engaged in Krishna's service. So, what, what was it? This ekadvam anupashataha. Do you know the meaning, Madhaji, Bindiya? Do you remember the meaning, ekadvam anupashataha? Ekadvam means what? Oneness, marriage. Oneness, right? So, in what sense? What sense is there oneness in Krishna consciousness? Where's the oneness? Seeing the Lord in all the living entities, seeing as a part and parcel of the Lord Brahman. Okay. Quality. Quality. Oneness. Yeah, in quality, oneness. In oh. quantity, uh, different. Yeah. So, what, in, in, in we have the, the sense of oneness is there in the, in the sense that we're spiritual, all right? And yes, ma'am. Another point in which we can also think of oneness, we have oneness with, with something in common with Krishna. The enjoyment? Yes, okay. Krishna likes to enjoy. We also like to enjoy, and also Krishna, the, the interest, Krishna, the, the, the Prabhupada talked about the family interest. In the family, right, the father and all the family members, they have the same interest. Their interest is the family, <laughs> right, they're thinking our family. Just like Prabhupada said, even on a national level, we're thinking, our country, you know, our country, my country, our country. And so that this interest, the common interest. So we have to have also this, the same interest as Krishna. And Krishna's interest, Krishna's interest, well, he comes as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, right? Why did Lord Chaitanya come? Came for, uh, two, two major reasons. One is external and internal. External reason also there are three. Internal reason also there are three. Well, I wasn't asking you. I was talking to somebody else. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My applause is for us. Yeah. Let, you got to let other people also give them a chance. You know. Of course, you're right. Everything you say is okay, but you know we have to try to open up the forum. Yeah. All right. Anyway, Lord Chaitanya comes to give everybody the holy name. He wants everyone to chant the holy name. Lord Krishna also talks about who is very dear to him. How do you become dear to Krishna? About his yes, right. Yeah, one who preaches. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, one who teaches this message, this knowledge of devotional service is very dear to me. So that's the way in which we can become dear to Krishna. So the interests of Krishna, we recognize Krishna's interest. This is a sense of oneness is there. So ekadvam anupashata. Ekadvam is oneness and anupashata means Seeing the acharyas and following them. Right, right. Seeing everything through the mood of the acharyas and follow them. Right. Okay. So, have we got any questions remaining here? Is there any question before we finish? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have one question. Yes, Prabhu. Yes. 
see, uh, in the previous two paragraphs before, uh, Prabhupada starts, uh, talks about the, the Nirguna platform. Nirguna, Nirguna platform, there is no object of enjoyment. He says that in that uh, paragraph. Uh, so when there is no object of enjoyment, there is no subject also. There is no enjoyer, there is no enjoyed. That's what uh, the Nirguna platform works. But why does he include that here in this uh, paragraph? So what does he mean by that? Oh, let me go to this now. I have the point. I want to see it for myself first. But he's speaking about Nirguna. Oh. Before, before. Oh. Uh, there is no uh, point in the middle. Huh? The previous paragraph, I think. On that platform, there is no trace of material qualities. Huh? This is same uh, paragraph. That paragraph. Oh, no, no, the here, it is there. It is there. It is there. Where well, is the Nirguna platform? There is never a clash over the object of enjoyment. Uh huh. Yeah. But I don't. I didn't see that. What you said. What is, you said. There's no. What? How did you say? Yeah, there is no object of enjoyment. That's what he means, isn't it? On the Nirguna platform, there is. There is never any clash over the object of uh, enjoyment. That means that there is no object. No, no, it doesn't mean that. There's never a clash over the object of enjoyment. There must be an object of enjoyment. But the point Prabhupada is saying in material world, they will have different objects of enjoyment. But the devotees have the one object of enjoyment. Not that there's no, no, there must be an object of enjoyment, but they have the common object of enjoyment, they have the common interest, right? We're talking about the common interest, one interest, the one object of enjoyment is common, so there's no clash. But the clash is there when you have different objects of enjoyment. Somebody wants to enjoy one way, somebody wants to enjoy another. And so the, the point is to put Krishna there in the center, then there's no clash. So object of enjoyment has to be there. Yes, Mother. Okay? Yes, please. All right, any other question there? Otherwise, we'll just finish here tonight. We're on time. Okay, thank you very much. So I'll meet you on Friday. We'll continue. Shri Holiness Bhakti Vignanath Narasimha Maharaj ki jai. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Thank you Maharaj. Thank you Maharaj. Thank you Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.